Welcome to 321 Exams. Um, today I'm going to be your physics teacher. I will shall be considering one of the most important topics in physics, and that is thermal expansion. Now, before we go to the details of thermal expansion, I'd like you to look at these um, two words, thermal and expansion. Whenever you see thermal, they will talk about heat, and expansion is the change in length, right? So if you combine both, you realize that we're talking about the effect of heat on change in length. Are you there? It can be area, it can be volume too. It doesn't necessarily have to be length, right? Now, by way of introduction, I need you to understand that solid expands when heated and when cool they contract, right? Why? Because whenever they are heated, these solids acquire, the molecules rather, acquires kinetic energy and tend to move. And considering the fact that they are solids, they are stationed, the vibration force is so powerful because the increase in temperature increases the kinetic energy. And the molecules tend to move with a kinetic energy that is very powerful, colliding with themselves and with the walls of the container they are contained. And a state might come when the force of vibration, we overcome the binding force, and what happened? They will be forced to break loose from their static position. So I need you to understand that also, that um, metals who are good conductor of heat, whenever they are heated, they also expand, right? Aside the fact that they are good conductor of electricity, they are also good conductor of heat, right? So solid expands, and we want to consider the expansion of solids today. But remember, the rate of expansion differs from different solids. It's based on the kind of material the solids are made up of. For instance, if you take an iron and a brass, brass expands more than iron. That shows that the brass material has um, a lower specific capacity compared to iron. So when it is applied, what happens? The heat tends to cause it to expand beyond the iron, even at the same temperature, right? So at the same temperature, different solids expand at different rates based on the kind of materials that they are made up of. We'll still talk about that when we get to the linear, the area, and the volume expansion. Now, I want to talk about the advantages of expansion. How is expansion an advantage? The first thing is, the removal of tight gas stopper. Now, whenever we have a glass and we have the stopper in it, right? If we put the bottle in water, the bottle expands while we have the stopper is, remains um, just the normal way it is. But as soon as the heat gets close to where the stopper is, it expands and therefore you can remove the stopper easily. So this is an advantage because it can help us to remove the tight glass stopper easily by just placing it in hot water. And if that area close to the stopper is heated, it expands and the stopper can be removed. Fire alarm. I believe most of us have this item at home such that whenever there is heat, it triggers off the alarm and it rings. This is an indication that there is fire in the house. It's also an advantage because as soon as there is an indication there or the, it sets the, um, the bell ringing, then we know something is wrong so that we can take the normal measure before the whole house is set ablaze. Fitting on the wheel in rims. This is also another advantage of expansion. Then expansion of metal using bimetallic strip thermometer. Now, there is a bimetallic street thermometer. It's made up of brass and iron reverted together. And whenever it's heated, it cough with the brass outside and the iron inside. So this is also another advantage. These are used in the production of thermostats, right? Which is used in um, the electric pressing iron. Bimetallic strip used in thermostat, just as I said earlier on. Now, let's take a look at the disadvantages of expansion. Expansion of metal or concrete bridges. Now, in the hot weather, I told you that um, solid expands. So the concrete bridges might expand. And whenever they expand, it might 
at the end of the day lead to the collapse of the building. So expansion is not really good for concrete or metal bridges, right? Because if they expand beyond normal, beyond their capacity, then there might be a problem. The cracking of glass cup when hot water is poured into it. I don't know if you've tried it before. When you pour hot water in a tumbler, in quotes, it cracks. This is due to uneven expansion, right? The side closer to the boiling water expands more than the other side. And for that reason, there is a crack. Expansion of the balance wheel of a wristwatch, right? Now, um, there is a balance wheel in every wristwatch. This helps to set the time accurate. It enhances the accuracy. If it expands, then definitely you have more space to accommodate that. And therefore, the timing will be inaccurate. So this is also another disadvantage. Sagging of the overhead cables, overhead wires. Overhead wires are made up of um, conductors, copper, although some are being um, coated with insulators. Now, when they expand, the length becomes longer and they are sagging, right? This is a disadvantage because of humans and um, other animals that ply on a particular route, right? Expansion of railway lines. Gaps are left or are being left on each of these railway lines to enhance expansion now so take care of the expansion is also a disadvantage right now busting of water pipe when water pipe expands beyond normal it busts right this is also a disadvantage of expansion now let's go to the application of expansion railway track if you look at the railway you discover that there are gaps in between each rail lines this is to allow for expansion, right? So that one will not, in the cause of expansion, get too close to the other. So that is one application. Bimetallic strip. This is a bimetallic strip. It contains two metals, brass and iron, riveted together. Please pardon my drawing. This is the brass and this is the iron. Right? This is at a particular temperature, right? This is normal. At a normal temperature. But when the temperature is increased, then you have something like this. Then we have, let's say this is brass, and this is iron. They are reverted together. So you have brass coming outside, and you have iron inside, right? This is brass, and this is iron, right? This is increase in temperature. Now, when the temperature is cold beyond normal, then you have something like this. Um, you have something like this. You have something like this, right? Then you have the iron outside and the brass inside, right? This is cooled beyond a normal temperature. So this application, it's very important because this is what they use in making your thermostat, which is found in your electric um, pressing iron and some other electrical appliances. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is linear expansivity. Normally, solid increase in length when heated and contracts when cooled, right? And I said it when I introduced you to this topic that the rate of expansion of different solid depends on the kind of material, right? Now, the linear expansion is given as the increase in length per unit length per degree rise in temperature.
that is giving us alpha, which is L2 minus L1 over L1 theta 2 minus theta 1, which is still the same thing as changing length over length, changing temperature. So this is the formula for calculating your linear expansivity. Remember, this has to do with the change in length on the increase in length, and it takes place in solids, right? Now we'll go to the one that takes place in liquid, area or superficial expansivity. The superficial expansivity is given as beta, which is 2 alpha, right? And that'll give you increase in area over the original area, change in temperature. And that gives you change in area over area, change in what temperature. So this is a formula for the area or the superficial what expansivity. And it takes place in liquid, right? So that is the, then we have volume. Volume or cubic expansivity, right? The volume of cubic expansivity is given as um, gamma, which is 3 alpha. And that gives you what? V2 minus V1 over the original volume change in temperature, right? Which is still the same thing as change in volume over volume change in what? Temperature, right? Whether it is linear area or volume, the unit is per Kelvin or per degrees Celsius, right? So the um, superficial expansivity is given as 2 alpha, while the um, cubic is given as 3 alpha. Now, the cubic can be real and the apparent. Now, the real cubic expansivity is a change in volume per unit volume per degree rise in temperature, while the apparent is a change in volume per unit volume per degree rise in temperature when the liquid is heated in an expansible vessel. Now, look at the apparent mass of liquid expelled by mass left times temperature rise, or this formula is also for the apparent cubic expansivity, right? Now, relationship between real cubic apparent cubic expansivity. The real cubic expansivity will give you the apparent cubic expansivity. Sorry, the real equals to apparent plus the expansivity of the vessel containing the liquid, right? So the real equals to the apparent for the plus the cubic expansivity of the vessel containing the liquid. Now let's go to what is called the anomalous expansion in water. Now, one thing I want you to understand is that solid, liquid, and gas expands when heated. Now let's take a look at water. For instance, it has a special or a unique ability which I'm going to be demonstrating here, right? Now, water, for instance, let's assume in ice states, when heated, melts. And that means that there is what? An increase in volume. There is an expansion when heated, right? Now, when water is heated, it expands from, say, minus 10 degrees Celsius to zero degrees Celsius, where it's converted to water. But from zero degrees Celsius to four degrees Celsius, the water contracts, having a maximum density of four degrees Celsius, and from four to 100, it expands like every other liquid. That characteristics from zero to four, where it contracts before expansion is what is called the anomalous expansion of water. Now let's take a look at this the density. This is the temperature in degrees Celsius, right? This is zero, this is four, and let's say this is 100. Now, it increases here. Water increases here when it's heated. It increases here when it's heated having a maximum density of four before it decreases or it goes down here, right? Are you there? So here now, density is what? Maximum. So you can see from zero to four, it contracts, right? And as soon as it contracts, the density increases while the volume reduces, right? 
And until it attains its maximum density at 4 degrees Celsius, where the density is maximum, and after that, it now what? Expands like any other liquid, meaning the density now what? Decreases. But let's take a look at the volume temperature relationship. And this is the temperature in degrees Celsius. Now, this is 4. And this is zero, and let's say this is 100. Now, at this point, the volume reduces, then before it increases. So it has the maximum, sorry, the minimum volume, sorry, at four degrees Celsius, and it has the maximum density. So this is the graph of density to temperature and volume to temperature based on the unique characteristics of water which is an abnormal or anomalous expansion of water. Remember what I said? Water from minus 10 to 0, when heated, it does what? It expands. But from 0 to 4, it contracts. Having a maximum density and a minimum volume at 4 degrees Celsius, and from 4 to 100, it expands like every other liquid. So with this, we want to start solving problems and we are going to be taking the first example from UTME 2018, question 18. What a coincidence, 2018, question 18. Now, metal rods of length 20 meters each are laid end to end to form a bridge at 25 degrees Celsius. What gap will be provided between consecutive rails for the bridge to withstand 75 degrees Celsius? Now, when we're talking about the gap in between, we are talking about the change in length, right? L1 is 20 meters. Change in length, we don't know. Initial temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Final temperature is 75 degrees Celsius. And the linear expansivity is 2.0 times 10 raised to the power of minus 5 per Kelvin, which happens to be the unit. But remember, we define the linear expansivity as change in length over length then theta 2 minus theta 1. And the linear expansivity is given as what? Um, 2 exponents minus 5. We are looking for the gap, which is the change in length, over what's the original length? Let's look at that again. 20, we have 75 minus 25. That was a change in temperature. OK? So you cross multiply change in length will now give you 2 times 10 raised to the power of minus 5 times 20 times what? 50. And the gap, which is a change in length, will now give you 2 exponents minus 5 times 20 times 50. So the gap here is 0 0.02 meters. So that is the gap between each lens or between consecutive ray for the bridge to withstand 75 degrees Celsius. Yeah, with this, gentlemen and ladies, we have come to the end of this lesson. Thank you for your time. See you in the next lesson, and bye for now.